This is episode 12 of the Growth Tigers podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Growth Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Brian Cotter, and it's my job to bring inspiring entrepreneurs of Vietnam and their stories to you, wherever you may be. Like episode 11, this week we take a different approach to the podcast. Instead of a guest, we have a list of opinions to share with you. The reason why I have a list of opinions to share is that I want this podcast to help share inspiration from entrepreneurs, to help build a community of trust, knowledge exchange, and grow the potential for everyone. Part of this is to showcase the best parts, the most inspired people, but the other side is to provide a platform to share information to help the community improve. This is the kind of episode that I hope will inspire you, if you are in Vietnam, to help grow the ecosystem. If you are outside of Vietnam, let this be a list of areas to look out for when you are considering investment here. Our list of opinions comes from someone that wanted to protect potential future business interests in the country. They didn't want their words to be taken out of context and used against them. So I'll be presenting their list and adding a few opinions of my own. This list is not random. I asked for their input. I had hoped to have a good compliment to the interview with Hao Chan from episode 10, which you can find at growthtigers.com slash gt10. I have spent time with the person that wrote this list. I know what they did over the course of their research, and I can say that their views, though formed over a short period of time, are not without deep thought and plenty of evidence. This is not to say that I agree with all of them, but I believe that they should be presented. So, let's start with the positives. Because the list isn't all bad. There's quite a bit of good. Most of these positives, I think, are pretty obvious for people who have been involved in the community here for some time but let's take a look. The first thing they list is that there's an obvious passion in the ecosystem, in the community. The second thing they list is exuberance. So much energy and desire to start, right? We can see this when you go to events and we, we go to universities, there's so much energy. The third thing is that the economics and the other numbers uh, about startup ecosystem are in favorable positions. There's a growing middle class, growing mobile penetration and internet usage. There's a golden age demographics. Another positive they listed is a lack of regulations that provides ample opportunity for entrepreneurial pursuits. It removes potential barriers to entry by young companies. Now, I, I understand this one because I, I see it as well. And we'll also see the lack of regulations or the gray area of regulations come up in the negatives. Finally, they list the influx of foreign and diaspora-based investment, money, and talent. This is a very good sign for the ecosystem here, that there's a matching, a matching case for opportunity and the tools to succeed. Now, like I said, some of these are pretty standard observations. I didn't learn something I didn't already know. But what's good about this is that it's obvious to someone who has spent a short time here that the potential is certainly present, if you know how to utilize it. Before I talk about the negative aspects of the, the list, I want to point out that there has been some very lively discussion recently on the launch Facebook page around the value of large conference events such as Hatch Fair, Tech Fest, and Echelon. Most of the arguments were that the teams that were already executing, executing well, the events added no benefit. Now, while I didn't join this online conversation, I wanted to add something here. I believe that events are what you make of them. At Hatch Fair, I met a number of interesting people. I had some great conversations, and I got to listen to one or two speakers that I really enjoyed. For Echelon, I had the chance to run into and do an ad hoc interview with Monkel from CodingGate which you were able to listen to in episode 11. If you're interested in that, that's growthtigers.com slash GT11. I didn't have the chance to go to TechFest, but I'm sure I would have found at least a few people I would have liked to meet. My point is, if you go in without a plan on what you'd like to get out of your time at the conference, you can't really expect for something magical to happen. 
If you're looking for information or you're looking for partnership on execution, you have to go look for it. Do the events need some better content, more focus on creating value for the participants? Absolutely. However, if you've been to large events in other countries on entrepreneurship, you'll see this is not a unique problem. They're not able to serve everybody equally. So if you want an event to be valuable, you have to make it so. Okay, off of my soapbox and back to the list. Let's continue on with some of the negative aspects. Here's what our anonymous friend has to say. In Vietnam, they found that the professional acumen is low. How the teams present themselves, how they behave in meetings, how they prepare their documents, prepare for meetings. All of these things are very ad hoc. They're not so well prepared, right? Uh, This could be because the ecosystem is quite young. But at least they're presenting themselves, right? Next, financial understanding. There is limited knowledge of financial systems and the way they work. Now, that could be venture capital terms, contractual, financial markets, how to do um, projections, things like that. There's a limited amount of knowledge. Third thing, the teams were not prepared to ask good questions. What they mean by this is that the teams asked very standard questions that had very standard responses. They didn't dig deeper. They didn't prepare questions that were valuable to them as a team. So in many cases, our our person who sent us this list, they were taking on the role of a potential investor. And the teams did not ask them questions that were deep and supportive for the team. They just asked very general questions. Now, some of the teams who did ask good questions, they didn't seem very willing to listen to the hard answers. They had an expected answer, and they were very confident that they would get what they expected, and then when they didn't, they weren't open to what the person had to say. Next, they found that there's a lot of hobby angels or entrepreneurs, people who are not fully dedicated to the craft, to the art, to the ecosystem. Many of them are hedging against the current work they are on, their corporate jobs, or they've got too many things going on. And if you're listening to this and you're in Vietnam, you know what I mean. Everyone's got a day job, a second job, and a hobby. I'm no different. This podcast is a hobby of mine for now. Maybe someday it will be my main job. I don't know. But when you have too many things going on, You can't be fully dedicated and serious to the one true thing. Next, when looking at teams, too many family members, too many friends that were selected for the teams because of relationships and not for their talent. If you're building a growth company, you don't want to have people on your team just because you get along with them. They need to be able to add value to your team, especially if you're looking for investment. The investors aren't going to care if they're your friend. They're going to care if they can execute. Next, too many copycats. We all know that already. There's a lot of copycats here. It's because there's low-hanging fruit. But what our friends list tells us is that there's too many short-term business models or models that really are not fully thought out or researched. We know that you can't simply take a business model from one country and bring it to the next. You really have to localize it and understand the local context. From their research, this is not being done. On to the complexity of the government and other parts of the ecosystem. Paperwork, relationships, networks, all of these things in Vietnam are complex and full of gray relationships or gray standards. It's really hard for people coming from outside to understand that, right? So if they can't fully understand the business systems and they're looking to invest, this will cause delay, longer than usual due diligence, and misunderstandings. For anyone who's been in business for more than a couple of years, I think this has happened to almost everybody. Next, the full and complete lack of trust. Lack of trust in contacts, business agreements, and partnerships. 
This person noted that when they were talking to teams and talking to potential partners, everyone wanted to be drinking buddies, friendly at night or friendly after work to help build that trust. But the reality is business doesn't always work that way. When you do a contract or contractual obligation, you need to have trust that people will adhere to the terms of that contract. Ultimately, that is how good business gets done. It doesn't happen here in Vietnam, at least not yet. Back to the teams. A lot of resistance for asking for help. As if it showed that there is something wrong with you or your team or your business. So many people here are not asking for help because they're afraid that it'll show someone that they don't know what they're doing. This is a mindset problem, right? This also goes to the reactive mindsets in problem solving. They wait for the problem to happen and then they react to it. Most teams are not proactive or they do not engage in risk mitigation tactics. Perhaps this goes back to the idea that the ecosystem is still young, not yet mature, right? Another factor is that there's a strong desire to maintain high levels of individual ownership and control. Now, as an entrepreneur myself, I can understand this one. It depends on the kind of company you are building. Ultimately, if you're building a company that you want to grow quickly through the use of venture capital, you're going to have to give up quite a bit of that ownership. Okay, on to talent in general. People in Vietnam, there's a lot of talent. It's everywhere, places you would not expect, but it also is highly varied. Our friend found a lot of talent that is unwilling to speak up. They were hidden in the ecosystem. I can agree with this. I know a lot of engineers in Vietnam who are extremely talented, but you would never see them at an event. You would never see them sharing their talent. They're just going about their work. This causes issues for teams who really could use their talent and actually has a value add back to that person. Right? So the call to action here is if you are talented, if you can do something, speak up, let people know that you are available or what you can do. Another point on talent. Overseas education does not mean overseas experience. This is a great point from our friend. Just because you went to school overseas does not mean you know how to work in an international environment. Especially if you were a student and then you worked a small job or something that was not in a technical area before returning to Vietnam. Yes, your international education is good, but don't assume that one equals the other. And a last point on something that I feel very strongly about, that overall in the ecosystem, there is a true lack of mentors, mentorship programs, and serial entrepreneurs that are sharing knowledge. We see a lot of coaches or mentors who want to be part of a business and coach on specific tactics. But the reality is these mentors and mentorship programs are not necessarily helping the teams grow themselves. They want to do a specific business coaching, and that's different than mentorship. And for serial entrepreneurs, it's more than just investing your money back in. It's that knowledge, it's that one-to-one -one kind of support that's missing. If you, as a serial entrepreneur, are open with your information, then the people you reach out to, they will learn to be open as well. And ultimately, the knowledge exchange of the ecosystem will grow, the ecosystem will grow, and everyone will benefit. Okay, so that was the list, the view of one person with a little bit of commentary from me. I didn't differentiate that much because I agree with the person in general. But now that I've shared some of their views and some of my views, I'd like to hear from you. What can we do to make this community stronger for the future? Specific actions. I want, I want to hear if I'm going to do another event, what kind of event, how am I going to increase trust, those kind of things. Send me an email at brian at growthtigers.com. That's B-R-I-A-N at growthtigers.com. Or message me by going to the website and going to the contact page, growthtigers.com slash contact. Or you can find me at the Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash growthtigers. And send me a message. Let me know, how can we improve this ecosystem? Let's do it in 2017. 
Next week, we got a special guest from Circo Coworking Space, Lin Huang. So tune in for that because I've got a series uh, with support from Circo, the newest co-working space in the city. All right. Thank you. Bye.